In a moment, we're going to look at 10 fantastic strategies to use when applying retrieval practice. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the effects of cognitive load so we can avoid this whenever we're trying to encourage our students to make use of effective retrieval practice. Cognitive load refers to the amount of working memory used at any one moment in time. There are three types of cognitive load. Intrinsic, extraneous and germane. Intrinsic cognitive load is just the inherent difficulty of a particular subject. Extraneous cognitive load is the way in which information is presented to learners and is thus under control of we, the instructor. Germane cognitive load refers to the way that we process, construct and automate various schemas. That is, the pattern of thought or behaviour that organises categories of information and relationships among them. So by helping students organise their instructional notes and learning materials and assisting them with strategies on how to actually study the materials, we are effectively helping them with both their extraneous and germane cognitive loads in the retrieval practice process. Let's have a look now at these 10 learning strategies. So the first learning strategy is what we're going to call the quick fire quiz. This is a study method that requires a partner or a group where you fire off some questions from the text or learner guide to the other person and they retrieve that answer from their memory and you let them know whether they got it right or wrong. A nice simple way to get that memory going. The next method is the paper quiz and similar to the quick fire quiz it asks you to retrieve information about that day's work. Basically you take home a quiz that either you prepare or the trainer has prepared. You set out some time in your day to go through each question carefully and answer the best you can then simply you can pair your answers with the textbook or the learner guide or the previously supplied answers and see whether you got them right or wrong. Now this is an example of active recall. So doing this is actually a great way to fire up those neurons and get that retrieval practice working. My take on the concept of a silent self quiz is going to use a concept called forced recall where the learner has to recall the questions of the quiz they may have done in the first instance and then try to answer those questions as well, just to themselves. Hence the term silent self quiz. Now forced recall is when there is no prompting, no cues to help the learner actually try to remember. The memory comes from pure retrieval. The learner can then go back, check their answers and even see what questions they could remember. So that's the silent self quiz. And I recommend that for the second, third, fourth and any other recall sessions that the student has planned. A paired quiz is where we activate students as resources for one another. The test me concept is a well used technique that can be harnessed both in lessons and as a part of the retrieval practice sessions. As it suggests, it's simply a case of one student testing from the text or learner guide one of the other students and seeing what they got right or wrong and then giving them some feedback. Number five is self-explanation and this goes a little bit beyond simple recall. What we're asking students to do is to think about the subject themselves and write down how they would explain it to somebody else. This asks students to make connections in their brain from previous experiences and draw all that together in a culmination of an explanation that makes actually more sense to them and therefore they may be able to communicate that to another student. This is a fascinating way for students to really get to the depth of a subject and understand it to the level that they have to actually teach somebody else. Now in this activity they don't need to do the teaching, this is more about preparing for it. So writing down exactly what they think the subject matter means. Number six is demonstration and performance. This is where the student can demonstrate some of the skills they've been taught or act out some of the content that they've learned in a physical way. Now this sounds kind of weird at first, but the science behind it is that if we mesh knowledge with physical activity, then that helps our brain link the two and therefore helps retrieval. The way we do that is by acting out certain knowledge and skills components in a way that makes intrinsic sense to the learner themselves. Elaborative interrogation is a great way to get into a subject. Basically the student asks themselves questions like, why does this happen? How does this work? Why did that work? Why did she say that? 
Why do you use that structure? And so on. This is one of my favorites because lots of knowledge forms kind of a narrative structure, like a series of events, a process, maybe cause and effect. So the retrieval practice can be formed by telling a story. Now you can tell this to somebody else to verify what you've learned, or you can just write it out and look back at the text or learner guide to make sure you're explaining a process correctly. In a vocational setting, just imagine describing how you're doing a particular task or telling a story around the task of how that task might look in a real world environment. A great way to consolidate learning is to summarize the content. Now this can be done in a few ways, but one way I would recommend as a part of the retrieval practice scenario is to summarize things like advantages and disadvantages or pros and cons. This gets the student to think about the content in a different way, applying their own knowledge, decision making, problem solving to the content that they've studied. The last method uses mind maps, where the student can write down key elements of the topic that they're learning and then from each one of those key elements, link it to other points they may have learned along the way or experiences they have. This makes links beyond maybe just the content itself to real world things that the student is familiar with. Again, this reinforces the learning and dramatically aids their ability for retrieval. Thanks for watching and please feel free to write any comments down that you have about the subject matter and we'll try to get back to you. Also, we'd love you to subscribe to the channel so you can catch up with new content being released each week. Bye for now.